All right, so I want to talk about method creation within objects and the way that ES6 has changed how you can declare methods. And I also want to look at using get and set within objects now available as part of ES6. So I can create properties and effectively make them private by creating my own get and set method. So here you can see I have a property called prop1 inside of my object. It has a value of 1979. And normally you would just say obj.prop1 equals say 1980, and there we go, we've changed the value. We can, within our object, create getters and setters for controlling access to this, and even changing the value when it's retrieved, or uh, changing the value when it's being set, so that there's a different internal value. So we can control access to our properties, and I'm going to start off by talking about the new way that we can declare functions. So this is the old way. Right here, I'm going to make a copy of this and I will comment this out. There we go. So now, inside of here with ES6, what we can do is instead of that, we can just add the name of the function basically. Now, this is still a method that is part of this. Now, I'm going to switch this over to let as well, just because we're talking about ES6, so why not use let? This is effectively a function, but the function is a method of this object. So I would call it in the same way that I used to, obj.prop3. This is a function. We do log run this. There we go. Call prop3. So this calls the function. It's just a kind of a, a shorter, sweeter syntax. Um, in the same way that if I had a variable, so I'll say let x equals 7, I can come in here and do this. What I have done here is I have actually created a brand new property inside of my object called x and it has the value of a variable called x. So it's going to search inside of here for a variable called x. It's not here, not within this scope, so I go up to the next level. I'm on the global scope. There's a variable called x. It has a value 7. So I now have this. And if I log that out, obj.x, there it is. There's the number 7. So I have, with one single variable name, created a property with the, ver with the name x, and I have assigned a value to it, which is the value of a variable called x. All right, so that's the new way of declaring methods for objects, the new way of declaring properties that have a value brought in with a variable of the same name. Now, getters and setters. So I have here, my prop1 and my prop2. With prop1, I've got a value of 1979. And now what I want to do is I want to define basically a function that lets me get at that value. So let's say get, and we'll come up with a name, prop4. Is going to be just the name. So you can see that we're effectively creating a new method here. So I need the comma because I've got another property after it. So I've done the same thing I did here in declaring this, but I put the keyword get in front of it. This is going to run and it's going to return this dot prop one. Now what I've done is I have created here a method that gets me the value of prop1. There it is, 1979. So 
this is the property that people are going to see, but it's actually going to be returning this other property. So this could be called something else. You don't tell people this even exists. This is the name of the property that they know about. This is our public property that people will use. And if we wanted to, we could change it. You know, this prop one times two, if I ran that, there we are. So it doubled the value of prop one. And regardless of what was in here, this would always be updating or taking this value and doubling it. When you ask for prop four, you would get double prop one. All right, so that's getters. Setters, same sort of idea. We're saying set, and we're going to um, come up with a function name, effectively. So this is an object method. And this would be how we would set here. So um, we'll say this dot prop one equals 1980. Okay, we run that. I forgot I have to pass in a value when you're setting something. Yes. So let's call it underscore val. I could have hard coded here. I don't have to use it, but I do require that. There we are. Undefined. Oh, sorry. And here, we're setting prop 5 equal to 1980 was the example I was using in the code. So I'm setting the value 1980 here. What this is doing is it's calling the method prop 5. 1980 becomes the val, and we're setting prop 1 to that. And then, again, we'll call prop 4 because that's the getter. There we are. So. This is 1980 doubled. This was 1979 doubled. We can change this back to just the property. And you can see it, 1979, 1980. All right, so we have the values, 1979, 1980, coming from prop 4, prop 5, or coming from prop 4 and being set through prop 5. Now, this isn't very useful. There's not often you're going to have different method names or property names that people are going to understand that you're trying to do this. So we really would use the same property name for both the getter and the setter. We don't want to have the same name here because this is the internal hidden one that people aren't going to see, but I will change this to prop1 and I will change this to prop1 and then we'll point at that hidden private internal one like that. Now down here I have to change this for my get, it's prop1. My set is also prop1. And here, prop1. Okay, so those are saved. So I should get the same results as I did before. Yes, 79 and 80. So get prop1, set prop1, and this is going to be pointing to that internal this dot pro underscore prop1 this one right here. So this holds the value internally, and these are the public get and set that people would use. They're using them the same way they were before. It looks just like a property where you're passing in a value, you're getting a value out of it, but it's actually a method inside of the object for getting and setting. And that's it. That's the new approach for declaring methods on objects and how to use getters and setters. And don't forget, if you are setting the value of a property to a very the value of a variable that has the same name you can just put the name of the variable here and it will create the property look for the variable and assign the value inside there all right so thanks for watching if you have any questions as always please leave them in the comments